I decided to try to build one of these little uh, coroplast boats. So I thought I'd show you a little step by step. What I did is I combined a couple of designs I saw on YouTube uh, and the original uh, Boy Scout uh, foldable kayak and I'm trying to see if I can't work those two together. Um, what I've done here so far is I folded the sheet of eight, uh, four by eight coroplast in half and that was a bear, believe me. So do whatever you can <laughs> to get it right the first time because if you don't, it's a bugger to get it back in place. Then what I did was I measured my uh, draft, which is my, my side are on the boat is uh, nine inches. No, excuse me, it's 10 inches. It's 10 inches. So I measured that down and I wanted it to go 20 inches in. So, so I'm going down 10 and 20 over. And then I drew a curve, scribbled it until I thought I had a nice curve and cut that piece out. Okay, then what I did is I turned around and took that piece so I would have the same curve, took it over here to the other end and drew my pencil line accordingly so that it's 10 inches down, 20 inches in and following the same curve as on the other end. And I'm cutting through both sides at the same time. Okay, now once I get both of those cut out, I'm going to fold those over as best I can. I'm going to try to get it straight the first time. I'm going to fold those over on top. I'm going to unfold the whole thing and fold those over. And I'll show you that when I get to here in just a minute. And then what I'll do is I'll draw the pencil lines for the bottom portion to match exactly to the top portion. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here I've got the tape off. and. You see this is the way it was oriented. What I'm gonna do is take this and turn it upside down completely. Why? Because I want that crease that I made uh, before to come up. So in other words, that's how we're gonna be able to fold it in half later and make it smaller. So what I'm gonna do is be taking these, uh, these uh, side walls, the wings, whatever you wanna call them, and I'm gonna be folding those inward so uh, I'm going to score with my Phillips head screwdriver along the line there. Hopefully get it nice and straight. And then I'm going to come back and fold those over. Okay, so this board that you're seeing, that's what I'm using as a straight edge for both my scoring and bending. Now I had already stepped on this and bent it up, but I just wanted to show you that that's what that was there for. This stuff is a lot harder to bend straight than you might think. It does want to go with the lines that doesn't always want to stay with them so the corrugations aren't necessarily the perfect bend. Uh, anyway I run it down there with that little Phillips head screwdriver just to kind of press in that entire length of the bend and then I come back and and uh, bend it up next to the board. Well basically I hope it all works. Alright so now I'm going to fold these in and try to crease them a bit and I, yeah, let's see here. Okay, so you can see how I've got this one bent. And it looks pretty good. I'm gonna take it slow because I don't want to accidentally bend some more of the, of the plastic cardboard. You see that we're just kind of putting some pressure on it all the way down slowly. Oh, well, here's what the thing looks like after uh, after we've uh, cut all the uh, angles to match. Now you'll see what I mean when I fold this over notice that they match right up there exactly see and I've done that on all the ends so now what we're going to do is come back keep this folded flat maybe I'll get some spring clamps and hold it and uh, I'm going to tape these edges so we're going to tape all the curves I'm going to tape those first and I'm going to go ahead and run a length of tape along all the side edges as well just to reinforce them and uh, then we'll have the basic shape of what's going on I think now I've got the first round of tape on the corners and I have it folded up here just so you can see how it works see if I can pull it out for you without it uh, getting all in place okay so there we are bang alright so that's unfolded and then we're going to put in some uh, 
supports in here so the sides go up. So you can see um, you have to kind of push everything down. That's what the supports are going to do. And I don't know how wide this is, but you get an idea right now. This is the sort of the shape of the kayak. Because I've got uh, these frames made up. Basically what they are is, uh, you can kind of see that, that's the same corrugated plastic that I'm using for bracing on either side. And then I'm using the, uh, just some scrap uh, three quarter material. It's like I'm some poplar I think. And I use that to uh, make a frame here. So this is gonna, these are gonna be the frames that support my side walls. You can see they're kind of tapered. They're 27 and a half inches on the bottom and 24 inches on the top. So it gives me three inch taper overall. And the uh, reason being is that will allow the top of the kayak to come in slightly. It doesn't have to. You could just do them straight up and down. But I thought it would uh, look a little nicer if it had a little bit of a uh, inward slant to it. So anyway, those are glued up now. I glued them up with some polyurethane glue. Just to try to make sure that uh, they were all waterproof. You can see how the uh, frames fit in. They just pressure fit in there right now. My intention is to, is to run Velcro around the edges and do the same, put the female portion of the Velcro around the inside of the boat. I'm going to measure it off so that it's exactly four feet between them. The reason for doing that is so, so that I'll be able to drop in a four foot floorboard and also have that fastened down with Velcro. So that's the goal. Uh, obviously the four foot floorboard is not the most compact thing but uh, I had to make a couple of concessions because I wanted a nice rigid bottom. Uh, other than that, let's see, I did add in, on the end I added in these blocks. You can see they've been glued in, they haven't been cleaned up yet. They're still kind of gummy. But the idea, they are split so that the boat can still fold, but they'll add some rigidity uh, when the boat is up like this. Just help, help keep things in place, help keep this from warping all, you know, warping all over the place and flexing any more than it absolutely has to. So it looks pretty good right now. Once I had the Velcro in and those are all uh, in there uh, tight, I think you're going to see a lot less flex and that floorboard is really going to make up the difference. So this gives you an idea of the profile. I'm sure my wife will be thrilled that I've got it sitting on the dining room table right now. Um, so it's your basic kayak shape. It's a bit more open boat than, uh, than the original popular mechanic style one and this is because I've combined this plan along with um, some uh, one that was on portableboats.com uh, and also a little bit of uh, Paul Hawkins uh, fold up kayak design. There are kind of a lot of ideas from the three of those. Now I am planning on up front here using some blue tarp and go ahead and uh, enclosing this area. You can see that I have uh, already put on a strip of tape here and behind that uh, I've reinforced that with another thickness, another strip of the, of the corrugated uh, plastic. Uh, I am using more than one sheet. One sheet is the basic boat and I think you could probably actually get the whole thing done for that if you just use some different materials for the other stuff like wood instead of using up more plastic like I did for these. Um, I had the extra plastic so I thought why not go ahead and do it. Anyway that's where we're at. I'll get back with you shortly. Bought some of this industrial velcro. I'm going to go ahead and put that down here, down here and up the sides. And that is what I'm going to use instead of trying to put blocks in or anything. I'm going to use that to hold these frames in place. It's also going to be the thing that there's going to be a strip along the top of each of these that will hold the cover in place. Cover will be taped to make it as waterproof as possible on the parts that stay. But I am planning to 
put a Velcro dots or whatever up here so that it can be pulled tight and, uh, and secure. Just another little thing to help stiffen everything up and hold it in place. So, that's the way the frames look in there. The whole boat, even with the frames, and still probably only weighs about maybe 10, 15 pounds. Uh, so, so far so good. I went and bought a two foot by four foot piece. This is actually a kind of a bead board. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. You can kind of see the grooves cut in there. I thought it would look kind of decorative and it was like five dollars more than than just buying sheathing so and it, since it's exterior siding I'm assuming that it's got exterior glue uh, anyway what we've done since then okay I've got that laid out in there basically what I did was I measured back from this point the inside point on this to the bow and it looked to be about 23 inches after this board was in did the same on the stern and honestly these are interchangeable you can go either direction on this um, so what I'm gonna do now is mark pencil lines on where all these uh, brackets are meeting the sides and the bottom and approximately where the floorboard is now I could have made it go all the way to the edge it's got to cut a little bit bigger um, that probably would have worked, but I thought, you know, that maybe it'd be better if it had a little bit of flex on either side, just in case uh, the plywood decided to start poking through my uh, my coroplast. Getting ready to put my covers over the fore and aft sections, and I was going to make them completely removable, but I don't think I am now. I think I'm going to go ahead and tape the sides and just make the velcro closure on the interior now there's a, I've got you notice how I've got the grommet laid over the edge here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, incorporate it into the bow and the stern so that I can uh, actually use that to put my tow rope on here I might as well make use of what I got there eh? so uh, I'm going to leave about the width of this uh, seam that's there. I'm going to leave about that, uh, cut around that uh, to contour of the boat. Then I'm going to use my uh, Nifty Gorilla tape and tape that all down in place. I'm going to leave a little bit of slack up here, meaning I'm not going to tape it completely right here, uh, so that I can create a flap. And I'm going to leave a little extra material here so that I can fold it over. So I'm going to fold it over tape it down, create a flap, and that flap is what's going to get the Velcro to attach here. So, you can see I've got it taped along the sides there. I may add some more tape just to strengthen it or make it look nicer. Uh, up front here, here's my flap. Like I told you, I was leaving that in place so I have a string uh, place to tie a lanyard. And you can see that it's also taped underneath there because I want to make sure that it's got enough strength and it's not inadvertently letting a bunch of water crash up in there. Up front here, this is what I meant by leaving a little room. You see I've got a little corner flap there that I've created a seam with tape. And you can see where my Velcro is. And I'll put three of those along there just to keep it in place. Okay, I'm going to do the other end and then we'll work on the floorboard and the seat. Now I'm working on that second side. I didn't show you before, but I thought you might like to see. See, this is about how much, um, if you can see that uh, overhang I have with the tarp. So I've trimmed it up that close, and you can see that bit there. And it's a little, just a little bit loose right here, and that's so that when you fold the boat, that it won't hold, hang it up on that. Okay, and you can also see I've got, I've put little tape darts or tacks all the way around, just kind of like a, a welder would do before they run a full bead. So I, I'm doing that just to try to hold everything in place while I put that big strip of tape up there so it doesn't all just move on me and bunch up. Anyway, just thought you'd like to see that before I go ahead and tape it down. Okay, I decided that the... Uh, 
skulls on this, the coroplast alone might be a little bit flimsy, so I'm going to reinforce this with uh, this bamboo stake material. Uh, I think it should do just fine because I don't think it needs a lot of reinforcement. This bamboo is very, very strong, so it'll still be lightweight, and I just thought it was a little more interesting than just using PVC. So I'm going to attach those on with some zip ties. I got a bunch of these black ones right here and so old technology meets t new huh so these are going to go I'm going to punch some holes to this side of the gunnel here and we'll loop that through and attach the bamboo all the way down and see the boat with all the nylon ties installed I don't know these these are to hold the bamboo line. That was my wife, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, the bamboo is going to sit right up in here and it'll be tightened down. I'm going to tie down the two ends first so that if there's any discrepancy in placement on the middle section, that they'll be the loose ones and not the ones on the end. So that's where we're at on this. Uh, just a side note, um, for supplies like these nylon ties, uh, your best bet is Harbor Freight if you've got one around you because these were like a buck for a hundred on sale. I got the blue tarp for free. That was a, another uh, promotional item from them. So just heads up on that. You can get a lot of this stuff pretty cheap if you try. Uh, if you can see this, this is actually uh, 3 8 inch beaded uh, siding, beaded plywood siding, and I figured that well, that's probably uh, weather resistant one, and uh, two, it's a little bit more decorative than just plain uh, piece of plywood. So it was 20 bucks for a sheet, and uh, you could certainly go with a smaller piece if you didn't need to make anything else. But I thought I'd probably use it. So. Anyway, basically I just rounded the corners off a piece that's two feet by four feet, cut any tongues off the edges, and as you can see it kind of wants to curve upward just a little bit naturally, and I think that's fine because when it sits in the bottom of the boat, the boat's going to want to sag that way anyway. Uh, it should stiffen it up greatly on the bottom, and that with the bamboo should be plenty. Okay, uh, what else I had for my sheet? I had plenty left over to work on this seat, so I'm making a folding seat. You can see how this is set up. I've already got some coats of poly, poly on it. Uh, it's just got a little lift to the front of it and it's going to have some rails that it sits on. And then I put a handle on the seat back. This is going to get hinged so it'll sit up like that. And well, I'm going to and I'm going to use some flotation pads for my seat cushions. Well, we'll get those put together and put the floorboard in and see what it looks like. The bamboo is on. And now I put Velcro strips on my floorboard. And I'm going to put that in there. You can see. There we go. That's what the floorboard looks like in there. I've got the uh, seat made. Let me show you how that is. These are just flotation cushions, some old ones that I had. So they pull right out. Now you can tell, see, obviously, that it's hinged. I just used a uh, this is just some of the same wood that I got for the, the actual floorboard. So it's 3 8 inch siding. It looks pretty good as a seat. And I made the hinge just, I just used duct tape. A couple layers of that. Because there really shouldn't be a lot of force on that hinge. And then the, uh, it's held up. The uh, support is by ropes. And it was, it's basically a takeoff of, uh, I believe it's a, uh, Jim Simpson's, Simpson's design and uh, I just made a few alterations so that folds up like that instead of uh, doing any kind of hardware what I did is I slotted some poplar and ran the ropes through that I just used uh, pieces on both the top and the bottom and you can see that it uh, threads through the bottom like that and then there are the rails that this keeps the seat up out of the water. So 
so that is just sitting in here now. I'm thinking of putting Velcro in there once I figure out exactly what the best placement for the seat is for me. And then I'll just kind of hold it. So i put this back in there. Okay, so that's what that looks like. The floorboard's in there. Looks pretty good. And at the last minute, of course, I decided I needed a kayak paddle. So I took a deck board and made a kayak paddle real quick. This is just slapped together in a couple hours. Uh, all I did with the poly was kind of brush it on thickly so that it would keep the panel protected a bit. It's certainly by no means a uh, top-notch finishing job. But that all came out pretty well, so that's what the finished boat looks like.